when I was really investigating the church and everything else and kind of getting involved in the online internet world of Catholics and everything else, they keep bringing up this Chesterton guy and I'm going, oh, who the heck's Chesterton? I've never heard of him. When you see so many people talking about somebody, you start reading them. And so uh, Catholic culture, uh, they had a, you know, an article on him or something like that. And it was actually a segment from, uh, uh, from, his, from one of his books and it was uh, the chapter on uh, the man in the cave. And I read that and said, wow, I'm not sure what I just read, but I want to read more. You know, there, there's something about Chesterton that uh, he kind of blows up your brain because you think that, uh, you know, you think that you understand things. And, and then you read Chesterton and you go, well, he can't be right about this. And you read him again and go, well, maybe he's got a point there. Then you read him again, hmm, I'm starting to think maybe he's right. And then... You know, then you're down to, yeah, of course he's right, you know. And then, you, you know, so you go through all these transformational shifts. You know, he talks about, you know, having to stand on your head to, to see the world and everything as it is. And he makes you do that because, you know, he has this engaging way, even though it hardly gets to the point ever. You know, if, if you know, you have to follow the rabbit trail around. But there is a rabbit trail and it's actually going somewhere. And when you get to that destination, uh, you'll find out just how right Chesterton is. Chesterton's biggest impact on me was... I wanted to be, you know, he was aspirational for me. Uh, you know, he had his friends, you know, his famous friends and everything else, you know, H.G. Wells and George Bernard Shaw, who were diametrically opposed to everything he had to say, and he, and he was the same with them, yet they were great friends, and they had all these wonderful discussions. And so I saw that here was somebody that, that could actually, you know, they have the old thing about, you know, hate the sin, love the sinners, but as Christians, we hardly ever do that in actuality. He was actually doing that. So he was engaging them with their thoughts. He would tear them apart, you know, when in his writings. He would tear apart what they're saying as being nonsense and bosh and everything else. And then he could go, you know, to the pub and have a have a beer with them. And so that was one thing. The other part is that uh, he should be canonized and he should be the patron saint of wonder and thanksgiving. Because he, you know, he, he doesn't explicitly show any kind of spirituality in his writings and everything other than his thankfulness to God. You know, he talks about praying before everything he does. You know, that, you know, there's this wonder in this world. There's a, He's thankful for the things that happened. You know, he talks about these unintended adventures, you know, having to chase his off his hat that flew off and going after that. He could see everything as a miracle. He could see everything, you know, he could see rain when he doesn't have a raincoat or something as, as a gift and everything else. So aspirationally, I wanted to have that kind of thankfulness and wonder for to God for everything that he does for us. <music>